Uh, thank you for joining us today. This is going to be our third uh, track time event, but um, this is our biggest event by far. So I just want to thank everybody for uh, making it out today. I want to thank our panelists for joining us. Um, I know you all rushed from your day job to, to be here, so I really appreciate that. Um, my name is Matthew Botello. I, uh, I support teacher track. Um, uh, among a lot of other things that I do, I support teacher track. And really one of the main things we wanted to focus on this year as a program was create um, opportunities for students to engage with the program um, on a level that's a little bit deeper than just taking the classes and seeing the counselors. We wanted to provide opportunities for you all to get to know one another, uh, get to know the program on a more uh, personal level, get to know the people that are in the program. And today's event is gonna be a real casual event. Um, I, I didn't mean to scare you all with the cameras here, but um, we're gonna record it and put it on the website so whoever couldn't make it can see it. Um, but the way I envision today happening is I wanna uh, invite our panelists to introduce themselves, let, uh, let, the, let you all know about their educational journeys, wh where they're currently working, how they got there, their, their process going through school. And then after that, we'll have about an hour or so to, uh, for you all to ask questions just to ask them what, what you might be interested in uh, in your route to becoming an educator, maybe ask them about their experiences. And I, it's not gonna be a workshop per se, I just want it to be a real casual like, question and answer opportunity. So um, again, thank you all for being here. And I guess we could go ahead and start off with uh, my boss here, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Colleen McKinley. I am the Director of Educational Partnerships and Programs here at Cerritos College. And Teacher Track is a program that is under that department. Um, I also just really quickly want to um, thank the former director who retired a couple of years ago, who happens to be in the audience, Sue Parsons. So she was a rabble rouser in the back. <laughs> striking up conversations with students. Um, but uh, personally, I come from the K-12 world. Uh, I knew I wanted to be a high school math teacher my sophomore year in high school. And I was inspired by my high school geometry teacher um, and kind of patterned the rest of my educational plan while I was still in high school off of what she had shared with me. So my vision of my career when I was in high school was that I would be a high school math teacher for about 30, 35 years and then I would retire um, and that happened for about six years and then my career took uh, a lot of different um, paths and so I'm really happy to be here today to share that with you um, in the teacher track program we like to talk a lot with our students about opportunities within the education field and you know teaching is more than just classroom teaching so um, my path once I um, left high school as I went to UCI and I knew I wanted to be a high school math teacher so when you're going to be a secondary school teacher you generally major in what you want to teach although that's not the hard fast rule but I majored in math and I spent four years studying math that I would never ever teach right I mean you're taking college level classes and if you're gonna go back to high school you're gonna teach high school level classes so um, I took a lot of in-depth math and then did my credential program the year after that and that's really where I learned the teaching part of teaching so teachings both art and science the science is the content but the art um, which can often be the most difficult that comes in your credential program um, so I did a, a year of credentialing which included student teaching and then got my first job just down the street at Mayfair High School. Um, I won't tell you what year because that will totally age me. Um, <laughs> but uh, I taught uh, full time at Mayfair High School for um, and everything from pre-algebra all the way up to pre-calculus. And as I was teaching, um, about three or four years in, there was something called the Mentor Teacher Project, uh, which the state of California um, had a program that allowed uh, experienced teachers to work with other teachers for professional development. And I had received so much support from uh, teachers that I worked with that I was really interested in getting uh, involved in that. So I became a mentor teacher, and that led to ultimately becoming what's called a teacher on special assignment. So I was released full time from the classroom in order to coordinate the beginning teacher support program. Um, and so I spent about six years coordinating that program. Um, and that's where my love of teacher preparation really 
took hold. Um, and you will experience, once you all become teachers yourselves, that after credentialing, there is a process to clear your credential, and you can now do that in school districts. So that was the program that I ran. After that, I was approached about becoming an administrator. There was an opening uh, back at the high school that I taught at, and so I became an assistant principal over curriculum and instruction, and then found myself somehow in the principal seat two years later, um, and I was principal for three years. And then I became the secondary director uh, at, in the Bellflower Unified School District. So it was a lot of district time, then I was back at the site, then I was back at the district, and so, um, that very that varied experience is really what led me to partner quite a bit with different programs here at Cerritos College. So I actually taught math here as part-time faculty um, in the beginning of part of my career. Um, I worked, worked with Sue Parsons on our K-16 bridge program um, that had started. I worked with Teacher Track by having Teacher Track students come onto our campus to observe. And so it was in that relationship that when um, Sue was thinking about retiring that she made a connection like, hey, we could really utilize somebody from the K-12 arena and I decided you know what I'll apply for that job and so here I am now as a director at Cerritos College and never in my wildest dreams would I have thought back at my high school self that this is what I would be doing uh, today so um, I would never have picked a different um, path for myself education is really where my heart is and um, I really encourage you guys today to you know ask us all those questions that you have um, here as college students and what you're thinking about your career head Wow that's a tough act to follow oh, so um, <laughs> my name's Jan Gibson and I'm full-time faculty here at Cerritos College as a child development professor and first I just want to say how excited I am that the child development department is going to be part of the teacher track program which is <laughs> absolutely fantastic recognizing that preschool teachers are um, teachers. So I have an unconventional story. As a child, I did know that I wanted to be a teacher. I was a child that lined up all my dolls and I taught them how to read and write and all those things. But high school happened and adolescence happened and suddenly the things that I was doing as a young child, I wasn't so much in, in high school. So I really honestly wasn't the greatest student and I just barely graduated. And I, and I did live here and Norwalk but I knew that I wanted to go to college so I came here at Cerritos College and Cerritos College to me was the same as going to Harvard. I was just so proud um, to be here. It was just such a big deal. It was really an overwhelming process for me and this is embarrassing to say but I'm gonna say it in case it inspires somebody. I came here my first semester and I failed every single one of my classes every single one. Um, I had problems with organization. I really did not have any mentors. So I came back the second semester. I still failed every single class. And I began to think that college maybe wasn't for me. So I quit going to college. But soon after, I became a mother, so a single mother. And when I had my daughter, I knew that I had to do something for my daughter. So I decided to come back to school. I couldn't come here because I literally was kind of kicked out, I guess would be the term. And I went to Cypress College where I had a new focus and that was my daughter. And I studied really hard. It took me probably four years to get my two year degree, but I did do it. And I transferred to Cal State Fullerton. And at that time, I really thought I wanted to be a fourth grade teacher. Mainly at that time, I loved um, long division, and I really <laughs> wanted to make... Um, Wait, say um, that again, you loved long division? Long division, <laughs> I loved it. And I wanted to make the missions out of like toothpicks, all of those things, it just sounded so attractive to me. And one thing that I found out is when you transfer from a community college to um, a Cal State or wherever it is you go, I had a choice of a major. They told me elementary school teacher, you can choose child development or you could choose liberal studies. At that time, something in me told me that child development was going to be the right major for me because in my heart I knew, and maybe because of my own experiences, if I understood children, I could probably serve them best. So I majored in child and adolescent studies, which is a science degree pre-birth to 21. And when I was finished, I signed up for the credential program at Cal State Long Beach, where it took me about a year, so to speak. And when I got out, so the jobs kind of swing of like what jobs are available. And when I graduated, 
there really was not many jobs in elementary school. So I got my first job teaching in juvenile hall. So I taught in the juvenile hall system for uh, many years, which gave me a lot of experience on how to support children, but really understanding the importance of family and family support. Jobs changed, so Anaheim School District was hiring, and I got an elementary teaching job. And at the time, I don't know if it's different now, it doesn't say like, hey, fourth grade teacher wanted. It just says elementary school teacher. So I was hired, and they said, congratulations, you're teaching kindergarten. And leaving high school, I was like, what, kindergarten? I've never been in kindergarten. I just knew of it as like the place at the end of the elementary school campus with the gate around it. And I'm wondering, like, why is that gate there, right? <laughs> so in my heart, and I really shouldn't admit this to child development students, but I always do, I was going to do the one year kindergarten and asked to transfer out to fourth grade. And what happened was honestly led me to my destination of preschool. I, I saw children that just needed so much support and even more families that needed, to, needed that support. I would go home every day crying, wondering what it is that I could do. Why is it that a child's five and already feels like so many things are stacked against them? It made me curious about preschool and what happens before kindergarten and there was a head start on our campus and i went to the head start coordinator and i said is preschool something that i can do with my credential i honestly didn't know and she said yes so i went and uh, i did get my permit and i had left the elementary and i began to work at los alamitos school district for state preschool and fee-based preschool probably for 12 years and that truly is where my passion was even though i had no plan of it at all. The rewards of working with children and family is incredible. I thought I would never leave the preschool students. Somewhere in the middle there, I went from my master's degree in child development because I knew I needed to understand theory better since I had such a, like a career shift, so to speak, and I did that. So while I was teaching, I also uh, was a mentor teacher, and I taught part-time here at Cerritos College. I did get Teacher of the Year for Orange County, and at that time, I um, kind of got enticed to leave the classroom, and I worked for the Department of Education for three years. I was called a uh, EEE, Early Education Expert, whatever um, that means, and I worked on quality and preschool, serving um, all the school districts and doing uh, math research and focusing on math in early childhood. And then Cerritos became full time, and that's where I am now. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, no, totally okay. Um, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me here. It's an honor to sit here before you on the panel. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to try to just keep myself together. This is so cool to see <clears throat> everybody here. So, <clears throat> I'm a first generation. Okay. Want to go? <laughs> Let me get it myself. I'll bring this to the next one. Laughter's <laughs> good. Um, so. I'm a first gener first generation um, everything. So first generation here in this country, a family of nine, very poor, Central California, migrant workers, so we worked the farms. And so um, my parents would always say, do you, want, do you want to continue working in the fields or do you want to go to school? Of course, if you've ever worked in the fields, <laughs> school. So, um, pursued school, and I did not want to be a teacher. Um, I, but I always, since as young as I could remember, wanted to help uh, at promise youth. So, at promise youth means. <coughs> students that aren't supposed to make it. And so I always wanted to do that. So I thought, well, I could be a social worker or I could be a probation officer. 
um, but I did not want to be a teacher. So I made it out of my community. I went to UC Irvine, and I felt like I was at Mars. I felt like I was in a different planet compared to where I grew up. And it was really difficult, extremely difficult, but graduated from there, um, worked in the Orange County Probation Department for about one year. But I was hired as a night counselor, day counselor. Um, so I thought I was going to do counseling. Um, but it was in a time of zero tolerance. And the mind frame at that time was punishment. And I wanted to work and do rehabilitation. So I resigned. And then I said, what am I going to do now? Um, when I came into education, it was at a time when classrooms had gone from two, 20 to 1. So there was a massive shortage of teachers. There was, there was um, just a massive uh, shortage of teachers. So I, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to sub, and then I'm going to make enough money to pay the bills. Um, and because now not only was I poor, but I was in debt. So um, I needed to make money. Um, and when in my first year, I, I heard about this, this thing called a school psychologist. And I said, huh, that's interesting. I never heard of that in my life. I didn't know school psychologists. I didn't know psychologists worked in schools. Um, and so I did my, my teaching credential. I was able to do my teaching credential while on the job in an elementary school, um, actually Santa Ana Unified School District. Um, I lived with all my kids in the neighborhood, which is those apartments, you know? So I got to, I got to live where my kids lived. So I understood. I saw my kids at the market, you know, that sort of thing. So that really helped. Um, but anyways, I finished my, my teaching credential and um, as soon as I finished my teaching credential on the job, um, I jumped right into a school psychology program. That took me about five, another five years to complete. So in total, I did 10 years as an elementary teacher, um, mostly as a fifth grade teacher in Downey Unified. Um, absolutely loved my job. Um, it was, um, you know, obviously very difficult, but loved my job. <coughs> but I always felt there was something missing. When I was in a teacher, it was about state tests. How are your kids doing on the state test? That was the one lens that you had. And it was reading, writing, math. Reading, writing, and math. Reading, writing, and math. Um, the social emotional learning piece was not a conversation that you would have. There weren't interventions in place. So that was, a, that was something that continued to nag at me because I had a classroom of about 35, 36 students. And why couldn't I reach some students? <coughs> that nagged me to my core. So I said, well, let me go on the path of, of uh, school psychology. Um, I was hired in Downey Unified as a school psychologist. <coughs> and I worked as a school psychologist for seven years in Downey Unified, seven different elementary schools, um, and one high school. They placed me at uh, Columbus High School, which if you're from the Downey area, that's the continuation high school of the district. And I said, why on this green earth? If I'm an elementary background, where they put me at Columbus High School. So um, while there, my, my first year there, I, I get um, a student um, who was my former fifth grade student. And we recognized each other right away. And I said, you now have an IEP, and you appear to be afraid of your shadow. What happened? Because I knew she was incredibly bright. 
yet she would pull straight Fs. So I would always be on her. What is going on? What is going on? I did not understand because I was just thinking, reading, writing, math, test scores. Not because I, I just didn't know. I didn't know. So within our first counseling session, I asked her what happened. She knew what I meant. She told me what happened. And then we spent the remainder of the session crying together. And everything made sense in that moment for me. And it was that social emotional learning piece. So I'm sure you've learned about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Where's the academic piece? Way on the top, self-actualization. We cannot get there if we don't address those four layers first. And so that is what I have learned in my journey through education. She thrived in the end. After about a year of the um, whole child approach at our school, she, she graduated and she's a strong and confident young lady with a diploma and we still keep in touch to this day. She graduated um, quite a few years ago. And so um, that piece, I can't emphasize how important it is. You probably know this. I just didn't connect the dots. I had a lot of different little dots. I just really wasn't fully connecting them. Um, and so I served as a school psychologist for seven years. I had the privilege to work with many individuals with um, very mild disabilities to profound disabilities. So, you know, the, the range, mild, moderate, severe, profound. Um, you've seen the movie Men in Black. You know that part where Will Smith opens the locker room and there's another little world in there that he did not know existed? That's what I felt like when I became a school psychologist. Um, and it was, it was um, such an honor and such a privilege to work with special education teachers and staff and, and students with, um, with disabilities and their families. Um, such an amazing journey. Um, in 2015, I was given the opportunity to serve as a principal at Columbus High School. And um, shortly thereafter, I was hired as the assistant principal, which is what I currently serve as. Um, and I love my school. Um, I love my kids. Um, but if there's anything that I can say that, you know, whenever you do work with a child, any child, whether it's in a classroom or anywhere, think about it from, I, I always like to think about it from Maslow's hierarchy of needs and then do, you know, meet them where they're at. It's not, you know, what do they need at that, at that time? And then work your way up from there. And as you know, the first four parts don't happen overnight. It takes time. It's a journey, and sometimes that journey is a bumpy journey, and that's okay. You know, but the, if, if you stay with it, you stay the course, they will self-actualize, and they will, they will thrive. Thank you. Okay, hard to follow acts. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, and I'll go, I'm going way back. So I can probably remember in fifth grade or so taking a career assessment. So I'm sure most of you have taken one. Because I didn't, I had no idea where I was going to go, what school I was going to go to, what I was going to major in. Um, my mom was a single parent, five girls. And her immediate thought was, how am I going to pay bills, food? So I didn't even ask her. Um, I heard about it through a counselor in high school, and where I placed in the career assessment kind of put me in the helping field. Um, I, so I go, great. You know, I used, like you, um, I was teaching my four sisters because it's one right after the other, and I was the oldest. So in summer, I would create those packets, make them homework, which they did not like. Um, so I was a teacher, and I would make them homework. So I figured, okay, I'll go into the teaching, maybe nursing field. So I go to Long Beach State straight from high school. I managed to, to get in with my GPA. Um, SATs, I bombed. Um, so still kind of feeling which, which direction I'm going to go. I started off with physical therapy. I said, you know what, maybe I'm going to try physical therapy. I like helping people. 
GPA was too low, could not get in. It was only taking 30 spots a semester, okay? I was just out of, out of the program. I said, okay, well, nursing was even more ridiculous. I just, I couldn't get in. So let me just take my GEs, um, going along, took a lot of classes I did not need. I did not know there was counseling on campus. I did not know the resources that were available. Um, so I, I just kind of did it on my own, kind of put out a plan. Uh, and we started radiation therapy. I'm telling you, majors all over the place. <laughs> um, so I tried to pursue that. I ended up stopping uh, Long Beach State. I dropped out, started a family. And I said, you know what, what am I doing? I gotta go back to school. So here I go back to school and I said, you know what, I'm, I like children working with, with um, students. So I ended up going into the preschool program. I was a child development major, finished off there at Long Beach. I did my intern hours, got a job at some of the local preschools in Downey. And I said, you know, it's, it's kind of not for me. I like the little ones, but I'm thinking maybe there's something else out there. Um, maybe the older students. So I went and I became an instructional assistant. I actually met Ms. Ortiz there. Mm -hmm. um, so I started there and I said, okay, elementary level, uh, you're helping them out. And I said, no, I still think there, there's something else out there for me. So I, f I felt like that social emotional component, which I was drawn to. So I ended up applying to a job for the district working as a case manager. So there's a local resource center in Downey which provides um, support, whether it's counseling, um, food for the homeless, uh, there's just parenting classes. It was just such a great resource that I wanted to be part of that. So I worked there for about seven years. I did an internship there and um, it was great, I loved it. And then another opportunity opened up in the educational field for me. I said, you know, I, I like that more individualized piece to it. I liked when families came in and I was able to speak to the students, find out what was going on. You know, no wonder you're not doing well. You can't see the board. You know, you need glasses. Oh, you know, there's something else going on. You know, you're, you're not going to school. You don't have medical insurance. And, and we're trying to get that for you, you know. So I felt drawn to that. And I ended up um, being there for, yeah, about seven years. And I said, there's something else out there for me. So I said, you know, uh, I like the, the college and career component. You know, there's a big push now for the A through G. So about four years ago, a little bit over four years ago, I, start, I applied to this position, which is college and career advisor, which is what I'm doing now. And I absolutely love it. I work mainly um, with seniors, but we encourage uh, the younger classmen to come on in, uh, help them with A through G. And knowing that for me, I think community would have been better because I did not know. I was all over the place. And if I would have just went for my two years, uh, complete my general ed, I might have been on a better track. Um, but I realized that there's not there's not always that four-year track. There's the two-year track. And with these awesome programs that you guys have now with two years free um, with the incoming students, it's absolutely amazing for that opportunity so that students don't have to worry about uh, a financial uh, burden on their family. Um, so continuing that um, journey of college and career readiness, I said there's something else out there for me. So I decided to pursue my master's in school counseling. And so I wanted that more, again, individual uh, component to it. Uh, at the resource center, it was a lot of sad stories. Um, people in need, that's usually what they came in for. And when I went to the college and career um, position, it was great. Students were ready to go to school. How do we do that? How do we get them their fee waivers for the ones that couldn't afford it? So I said, I want that more individualized attention, but still helping out with the A through G track, uh, scheduling, things like that, doing um, workshops. So I totally enjoy, enjoy my job. I love my job. Um, but I said, there's something else out there for me. So I recently finished my master's in school counseling. So now I'm gonna be looking out for a position as a school counselor, but it, it was a journey, like I didn't have that background of the push for college. 
um, I, we were, I was first generation without even knowing what first generation was. It wasn't even a label back then. We just knew I was the first one in my family to go to college. Um, so, and with my mom being a single parent, she was just in a mode of survival. And I ended up becoming a single parent. My kids got to see me graduate um, with my bachelor's. They're gonna be able to see me with my master's. So I try to be a role model for them. Um, I know it's hard, they're not one student. One of my kids is, is at Cal State LA, um, trying to graduate there. And my daughter went straight to Long Beach. And after the first year, she, she ended up failing, um, lost her financial aid. And I said, you have to figure it out. I'm not gonna force you, you're an adult, you'll find your path. Um, but I hope one day that you will go back to school and find what is interesting to you and that you can maybe um, evolve into a passion. So I just, every day I encourage students to find their way um, and I will help you as much as I can. So how can I complain about my job? I love it, so. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And then uh, just to share a little bit about myself as well, um, <clears throat> like I said, my name is Matthew Botello. Um, I, the current role I'm in now, I, uh, I work for the college as a site bridging liaison, which is kind of like a, a funny name, but essentially I'm like a college, a college rep, so to speak, but I do a little bit more than, than simply outreach. I work with students one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'm at eight different school sites. And uh, what's really great about that is I'm able to see, I'm at three different districts, I'm able to see the different students, the different parents, the different, uh, each campus kind of has its own culture. Each campus has its own uh, different identity and its own different demographic of students that is unique. And um, that's been a great uh, opportunity for me to see. And it's just been very, um, very, like it really, it fills, it fills my heart. Like I feel like I have a job that has a lot of purpose, um, especially because you know, a little bit about the journey, how I got into that position. Um, I grew up in, in Paramount. I attended Paramount Unified all the way up until 10th grade. And um, around that time, 9th and 10th grade, I really didn't know what I, what I wanted to do um, in terms of, like, after, after high school. The only thing I knew about, you know, again, being first generation, the only thing I knew about college uh, was that it was expensive and it was hard to get into. Um, that's all I knew as a, as a 9th, 10th grader. Um, I actually thought, I, I haven't told too many people, I don't really tell too many people, but I actually thought I was gonna join like the Air Force because I just really, or, or some type of military branch just because I had no clue what I wanted to do. Um, and around 10th grade, I, I wasn't doing as well in school. Um, I was just kind of, my, my parents and teachers and everyone likes to say I wasn't reaching my potential. That was like what I heard on a daily basis. Um, I ended up transferring uh, 11th grade. Uh, I transferred, we moved actually. Um, and we moved to La Mirada, and I graduated from La Mirada in uh, 12th grade. Well, 11th, I did 11th and 12th grade there. But in the process of my going from my junior to my senior year, I had a English teacher. Her name is Miss Wood, if you went to La Mirada High School. She's super dope. I love her. Um, I had her for, for language arts, and I just saw the uh, amount of passion that she taught with. I really saw how, how she really, like, cared about, about her students and cared about the literature too in a way where what she was teaching had had the possibility to, to talk about something bigger. Because I remember 11th grade we were talking about, we were reading uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, we were reading Henry David Thoreau, Gandhi, like we were reading all, all this type of literature that was very um, powerful, you know, it really meant a lot. It was a lot about social movements, it was a lot about uh, inspiring people. And, and that was the first time in my life that um, I seen literature be more than just like a boring book. You know, I always like, I, I enjoyed reading, but I didn't really understand the power that it had. So Miss Wood actually taught um, an, a 12th grade class, which was uh, Principles of Education. And um, I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do my senior year. You know, when your senior year, when you kind of finish up your credits, you either go like the smart kid route and take like the APs and honors, or you kind of just <laughs> chill and just take your English and econ. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah? Okay, so so um, I had a couple free periods. So I said, what the heck, let me do this internship with Miss Wood. Um, so I was, a, uh, I was in the Apple program and I was an intern for a fourth and fifth grade combo class. And um, 
it was an experience. I realized I loved education, but I didn't want to be with fourth and fifth graders. <laughs> the, I don't know what it is about that age group. They were just starting to get an attitude. I don't know. Maybe it was just with me. Also, too, I was, I was a senior in high school, so maybe they didn't have that level of respect for me that they would have from a teacher, right? Um, but from there on, um, you know, Miss Wood uh, connected me to, to teacher track, and actually Sue Parsons was back here. I love Sue. I always give her a shout out every chance I get. Um, you know, Sue and, and Ms. Wood and a couple other folks really took a genuine interest in me. And um, it was one of the first times that, that I had a teacher or educator like really, really believe in me, really believe in my abilities and really like give me a shot. And I remember uh, Sue invited me and, and, and we went up with the team to Sacramento. It was in my senior year. I felt so important because we took a flight to Sacramento. I wore a suit. We left in the morning, came back in the afternoon. I felt so, it's like, so important and special. And uh, we applied for a grant. To, to build a program like this, uh, you know, throughout the state of California. Unfortunately, we didn't get it at the time, but a lot of the stuff that we were applying to do is, is currently in the works now in, in other capacities. But um, from there, I just felt really, really uh, motivated to continue with my education. And I came to Cerritos, and I just remember, like, just being really on fire about, about education because um, having them believe in me really, like, set something off inside of me. and. Um, the path to, to, to graduate college, I didn't know what it would look like uh, at all. I, I attended full time. I started off with remedial classes, um, and, it, and it seemed like it was going to be a, a really difficult journey. I didn't have a car, so I was riding my bike everywhere from La Mirada to here. And then I had a, uh, I, my first job was I was an avid tutor at a middle school in Whittier. So I would ride my bike like 45 miles a day, and I wasn't even getting paid. Wow. And it was, yeah, that was rough. It was really rough. Um, but you know, from there, I ended up getting um, like part-time jobs. I ended up working, uh, getting a job full-time to, to where it was, it was really difficult to balance everything. But I was able to support myself uh, financially and, and be independent because, um, you know, I just didn't want to put that burden on my parents. So I was here for two years. Um, I loved my time here. I really cherished my time here. Um, I, I did the teacher track program because the whole time I intended on being a, a high school English teacher. Um, I also did the honors program. I was in student government. Uh, Sue hired me to work for a teacher track program and I kind of stayed connected since then. And then from there, um, I transferred to UCLA where I got my bachelor's in American literature and culture. And uh, similar to Dr. Ortiz, I thought I was in another world too. I thought I was like in Mars. I, you know, it was just so different. You think it's LA, but it's, it's a different side of town. It was, you know, leaving my family for the first time. I'm a big mama's boy. I was tough. Like not having home, co home cooked food was tough. The food out there was good, but it's just not your mom's food, you know? It's different, it's very different. It's very different. Um, I'll trip you guys out. Like the first time I ate in a dining hall, my roommate wanted me to go to this like healthy dining hall, and they had quinoa tacos. I didn't even know what quinoa was, <laughs> but you don't want it in a taco, like it's just, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, so I, I was up there. I, I finished up my uh, undergraduate uh, degree, and Colleen actually was my uh, teacher for EDEL. She was my professor for EDEL, and she told me she's like, hey, uh, you know, you have a lot of potential. I want to hire you as a teacher because at the moment she was working in Bellflower Unified. And um, she ended up getting hired here, and then she's like, hey, I still want to hire you, but you should work for Cerritos. <laughs> so, Just work where I work. <laughs> yeah. So that ended up happening, and, um, you know, I've been here for a year, and it's been a great, you know, it's been a great learning experience, a great opportunity. And actually, um, Dr. Ortiz and um, the principal at her school, uh, Dr. Zagara, they're, they're helping me get my substitute uh, credential, so hopefully I'm going to be a... Uh, teacher for summer school this summer, so uh, I'm working on that too. So I'm still gonna teach, and I'm gonna be at the college. So I'm in the process of figuring some things out, exactly which route I want to take things. But um, it's been it's been a great journey, and uh, I just want to thank all the panelists for being here. So I know we took kind of a while sharing everyone's everyone's story, but you know, deservedly so because I think everyone's story here is really important. And um, now what we'll do is I guess we'll open it up to questions. Uh, and just in the interest of time, if, if you want everybody to answer the question, that's fine. And we'll try to do so kind of promptly. Or if you want to direct your question to a specific person, um, you could do so as well. So is, is there any questions that we want to ask? And, and the questions could be about anything, about our individual journeys, about the process of becoming an educator, or just maybe uh, about the program. Yeah, about the program itself or details that, that you found really interesting about the program itself. Mm -hmm. um, and can you introduce yourself, please? 
My name is Hilary Sabanis, and I'm a SLIPA major. Um, but considering uh, pursuing transferring to my bachelor's or to a bachelor's program. So my question was, what does it mean that um, a child development major is going to be part of track now? Is it going to be um, like the Cal State uh, with the Cal State Long Beach, just like the Long Beach program for the regular teacher or elementary teacher program? Or what exactly will that mean to a child development major? Student? Right. That's a very good question that we've been spending the last year discussing. Um, what? So let me back up and just tell you why this idea came about. Um, teacher Track actually started um, as an elementary program. It was um, at a time where when they were talking about 20 to 1, um, the, two, the president of Cal State Long Beach, the president of uh, Cerritos College, knew that they needed to do something to partner to get more teachers into the pipeline. And so the teacher track program began out of patterning um, our program after Cal State Long Beach's integrated teacher education program. And that was a liberal studies degree. And that was before the elementary ed, 8AT, but we started with that pathway. And actually Sue was a math faculty at that time that was part of the team that developed that program. And then over time, the secondary um, education added, as well as CTE. But this whole time, there has been a child development department and an early childhood education classes, and Teacher Track has always partnered with them. But we, but because of that strong partnership, um, about a year ago, as the college started thinking about Guided Pathways, which is a statewide initiative, um, we were thinking, there is a disconnect here for our students because the reality is that students don't necessarily know what they want to teach. They may come here knowing that they want to work with kids. They may come here knowing that um, I know I want to teach with younger children, but I don't know if it's preschool. I don't know if it's elementary. Um, and we want to be a resource and teacher track no matter what a student wants to teach and give them opportunities to explore that. So. What you know how the, if you're a student here at Cerritos College, the way that counseling works is that you have general counseling, but you also have counselors that are um, very, like they they have a specialty. And if you wanna do child development, there's a set of counselors with a specialty. And if you wanna do elementary, there's a set of counselors with a specialty. So we realized we have to like cross train one another and we need to have um, uh, resources for students within the teacher track program, no matter what they want to teach, whether that's preschool, elementary, secondary, CTE. So in this last year, we've asked ourselves that very question, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean that the child development program is changing, right? The, the child development program is what the child development is. But what we want to do is take students who um, know that, they, that teaching is their passion and have them be part of this teacher track community and provide additional resources. Like for instance, we have our K-12 partners that often have job opportunities for students and they like to advertise that. Like for instance, um, being an instructional aide. Um, we will often have AVID programs come and make presentations about needing tutors. That's they could we have, have paid me though. Yeah, <laughs> they could. I can't believe you voluntarily yeah. wrote. That's some passion yeah. for teaching, man. Yeah. Um, also, there's scholarship opportunities. So the advisement is, if it, it will be similar in that if you really are focused on um, being a preschool teacher, but we've spent time as um, counselors and faculty and staff really thinking about how does a student who doesn't know maximize their educational plan? Like what if I don't know? Are there classes that I can take that will fulfill both so that I'm not wasting my time per se as I'm trying to determine those things. And so um, that's what we've spent a bunch of time doing and then we will be rolling it out in the fall. Um, and so what we'll likely be doing is reaching out to students to fill out an interest form or to invite you to um, apply to teacher track. And it isn't gonna be mandatory for child development majors. It's just an option for students who are really exploring this whole idea of teaching. And I don't know if you want to say anything else about that, too. It all. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> Did that answer your question? And for those of you that are child development majors that haven't um, been to, to Teacher Track Office, we are literally located right across the hall, very conveniently located right across the hall. So feel free to, free to come by any time to find out information about the program. Any other questions? 
It's supposed to be a question and answer, so we need to have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> if not, I could I could ask some questions, but I definitely want to uh, open up the opportunity for you all. Uh huh. Okay, I want to um, learn about the CTE part because I'm a hair stylist and I want to become a hair stylist. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so but I'm not sure if, if I should do that or become a math teacher. Wow, that's too... Oh, I can tell you as a former math teacher, I could never be a hairstylist. God gave me boys because I cannot do hair, so kudos to you. Um, so what, what CTE is, and in education, the other thing I would tell you is we tend to um, throw out a lot of acronyms, right? So always feel free to ask, what the heck does that mean? Because we speak a language, like wouldn't you say education is its own language yes. where we don't even realize that we're using these terms. But CTE stands for Career Technical Education, and um, our K-12 uh, districts are really ramping up what those pathways might look like. Um, I'm not aware of any locally that have like um, those programs at the high school level. Often your licensure and things go either through a community college program or. No, I'm already licensed. Okay. You want to teach in one of those yes. programs. Mm -hmm. I got it. So if you're not teaching in the K-12 system, you wouldn't need to, I don't think that you would need to get a credential for that. Um, but I don't know of anywhere locally where you could teach that at a high school level. However, in an ROP program, that might actually be something that they might want to add. So in order to teach in a CTE area, the requirements are a little bit different. Industry experience is like the most important thing. Um, so what I would suggest is that you come to the center, make an appointment, and we can talk about like the steps to getting a CTE credential. Um, but as far as being a math teacher, then you would continue like studying math here at Cerritos, transfer. Um, you really can major in anything and become a teacher in anything else. But at the secondary level, you have to prove that you really know that subject. So sometimes it's hard to do that without that major because you take a test called the CSET. And so to teach math, you would need the CSET in math. To teach history, you would need the social science one. Um, so that's what's so complicated about teaching is that there are a variety of paths, as you've heard from all of us today, how to get there. And so you really have to advocate for yourself by asking those questions. You know, make And we have specialized counselors here in the teacher track program that not only know <coughs> what to do while you're here at Cerritos College, but what that next step is. What does transfer look like? What does credentialing look like? Thank you. Matthew, if I could just say, mm -hmm. I think one of the, the biggest things that, that I found kind of my pathway and what I liked and what I didn't like was, well, internship, I, of course we all want to get paid. Right, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> but internships are a, really, are a really great way to find out if you like, especially if you're going to go into teaching, where in that spectrum of K through 12 or preschool. Like I said, I did my internship for my, my major, child development. It was great, but I'm like, I don't think I can work with these young ones all day. It was very, um, took a toll. <laughs> and so I said, okay, that's not, that's not for me. Um, I went to the elementary level and I said, yeah, they're, they're fun, but they're just, it's just not for me. I did an internship for my hours for school counseling at the middle school. Oh, that is not for me. A uh, <laughs> lot of social emotional issues, um, more than what I thought back when I was going to, we called it junior high back then, um, middle school. And so I said, you know, I just really enjoy these high school students. They're funny. They get, you know, you can joke with them. They have a sense of humor. They're on their way of becoming adults. So I knew that was a population that I wanted to uh, make an impact on and that we have this great connection with with students and so if I could just emphasize um, volunteering or internship if possible if you can get that part-time job um, working with a certain population I think it will help um, students in our teacher track at Downey High School will come back and say oh no I don't want to do elementary or they absolutely love it and it's a great way for them because they're in the program and they're getting to see uh, and interact with these students and they know whether or not, you know, whether or not they change their mind later on, that's that's up to them. But for right now, it's just that initial experience uh, of being around those students that is helping them to decide which direction they're gonna go to. And I think you're making a really good point about 
the opportunity um, to explore the career of teaching while you're still in school. I didn't realize that when I was doing my um, degree. I worked at Sam's Club for four years during college <laughs> when I could have been working at a school and getting um, experience and watching other teachers do things. And so that would be another benefit to the teacher track program is that we often have paid internship opportunities. One example, if you are interested, is we have a summer STEM academy um, each summer. We generally recruit students out of the education pathways. In fact, when Matthew was in the Apple Academy at La Mirada High School, he participated in that. But we also open it up to existing teacher track students as well. Through the summer STEM academy, um, a grant pays for students to take an earth science class and the class and the books are all covered. And then you work with credentialed teachers to learn four different modules that we then implement at local middle schools. Uh, one middle school in Norak La Mirada and one middle school in ABC Unified. Um, and generally those students are fifth graders going into sixth grade and starting at the middle school level. So it's a, a free opportunity for their parents to put them in a STEM program and get them acclimated to their new school site. Um, but it gives students at Cerritos College the ability to be paid for, it's a paid internship, so that time that you're spending with those middle, middle school students um, is paid. But you're also working with another student and getting to know what it's like to teach uh, with you know science materials like there's soap and there's things that you have to manage and all these parts about teaching that can be very complicated but it's all under the direction of a credentialed teacher who's giving you feedback throughout it so if that's if you are looking for something extra to do this summer and that sounds like it would be interesting to you the application deadline we still have a couple of weeks stop by the teacher track center and ask for a summer stem um, application yeah. And, and I wanted to add something really important to what Colleen was saying too. Um, that summer STEM program, what's really great about it is uh, it's schools that are in the community and at the community college. You know, there's so many people <coughs> that come here and once you all go to become teachers or you participate in a program like this, you work in the same communities that you kind of grew up in, right? So I think for me that's been what I could say in, in my brief experience. Um, you know, working in the roles that I've been in, that's what's been most rewarding for me. Uh, when I was in, in uh, summer STEM, this was five years ago now, uh, summer of 2014. Uh, it was crazy, it's already five years ago, <laughs> time flies. But what was so great about that is the students that I was working with are, you know, they, it was like, they were like my little cousins or like my little brothers. They looked like me, they sounded like me, they grew up where I grew up. And um, over the years, I still see some of those same students when I work at the high schools. A lot of the seniors that I work with were in my class as sixth graders or seventh graders. I don't know. I'd said they might have been seventh graders at the time. So it's just been really great to see that, see the same students. Um, you know, especially when I work at schools in Downey. Um, I, I went to church in Downey, so a lot of the students, I know them, I see them. When I work at Paramount High School, um, it's crazy. Like, students come up to me and tell me, like, hey, were you my sister's quinceanera? And I'm like, what's your last name? I'm like, I was. <laughs> or I played football with their big brother or whatever it is. And, and to me, that's, that's really one of the greatest benefits, one of the greatest things about Teacher Track is I know when we grew up and we went to school, like, there's so many diverse faces in this room, it's crazy. But how much more diverse could our teachers have been? Like we could have used more teachers that looked like us, sounded like us, grew up where we grew up. Like Dr. Ortiz, you could you could probably share how um, impactful it was to live in the same community that your students did. Yeah. You you understood them at a different level. Right? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I remember the the idea of college. Actually, I was in second grade, and um, my teacher, Mrs. Rodriguez just kind of ran, I mean, she was very young, so she brought this guy into our classroom and he talked about this thing called college, right? Second grader, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I, I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. That sounds fun and, and that sounds like a great place and that's what I'm gonna do. So the seed was planted in second grade and it really gave me, like, why do you get, why are good grades important? Oh, because I'm gonna go to college, you know? So. Um, it's really, really, really powerful to connect with the students at some level beyond the business of grades. That's, that's absolutely important. Um, the summer STEM program, is it only for the people who, are ever, who haven't taken your science? 
Yes. So you need, if you've already taken earth science, then unfortunately you wouldn't be able to, because it's a cohort and they work with some of the content in the class. So that that's an excellent question though. So if you've already taken earth science 110. Now that being said, we also work with Downey and their summer steam works program. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be um, sending out some information soon about that. I have an appointment with a coordinator for that program. And um, in that particular internship, we have teacher track students that work alongside credential teachers that are um, within that program and it gives them the ability to work directly with a teacher in a different STEM setting. Okay. Thank you. And we have about five minutes left, so if you have any questions, please. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, opportunities like that, where else can we see their site from teacher track? That's a good question. Um, Sometimes within the districts themselves, you will find those things. Um, but within, because I manage the program with our database, um, that that's how we advertise them. Um, sometimes you can find them on our website. But um, are you are you a child development major? Yes. So what I would say that's another reason why we want to have the early childhood pathway within Teacher Track, so that you are part of that larger um, database where all this information goes out to. I had another question. How was it like uh, your experience as a principal? Because um, I know you switched. It, it's it's been amazing. It's really been amazing. What I love about being um, a site administrator is that you really run the gamut from the teaching and learning that goes on in the classroom to really getting to know families, the backstory, intimately. Um, you, 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 you get to connect with, with, with the students. It's still teaching and learning, but it's also that social emotional piece. You work with kids with uh, special education services and without special education services. And um, especially at my school um, or students that I'm really passionate, I, I wasn't academically at risk ever. I was a gate kid from I was identified in kindergarten. Um, I remember getting tested. So learning, teaching, learning was never difficult for me, but I always had a passion at working with, with that promised youth. So um, I, I think the, the, the one thing about working with at promised youth, it doesn't matter where you are, um, they succeed because of you, not in spite of you. And so if that makes sense, that is, that is what I love. I love that. So as a principal, as an administrator, um, I get to do that every single day, every moment of the day. You're either going to get punished or we're going to talk about it and you're going to get back. You're going to pick yourself up. You're going to dust yourself off. We're going to fix this. We're going to you know, do some problem solving and you're going to get back to the business of, of learning. We're going to graduate either at our school, you're going to get your diploma, and if not, we're going to walk over to this other school and we're going to get you set up. You know, so I can be scared of you because you come, you come with, the, with, the, with the story or, or not. And um, I absolutely love that. And it's hard. Some days are harder than others. Some days are harder than others. You know, absolutely. But I love that. I love that. It does not feel like work at all. And, but I'm fortunate that it, it allows me to have um, independence, be financially independent, you know, and provide for my family. So um, I, I, I do miss teaching. I, I miss teaching, oh my gosh, so much. So I'm trying to figure out how I can get back into teaching somehow. That's kind of what I'm working on right now. That's my next. I just, I just graduated with, with my doctorate. And so, why did I want to get my doctorate? Thank you. So that I could teach. I want to, I want to teach. So that's, that's what I'm working on now. I want to hopefully one day promote to a principalship and, and teach. So, yeah, I'm very, very blessed. Thank you. And I'm glad you asked about administration, because the one thing I, I want to make sure that you all know, because that's a path maybe you didn't consider. Most administrators were either counselors before or teachers. You don't really go right into administration. You're never going to get hired as a principal right out of college, right? <laughs> so um, there, is a, there is a separate credential for administration. It's called an administrative services credential. And it applies to any type of administrative position, whether that's an assistant principal, a principal, a district 
job, anything like that. So you add that to an existing base credential. Um, and I would agree, like I used to say as I was a principal that it was my favorite job and my and the most difficult job though all at once. Um, because you had the highs of the highs, you got to celebrate with um, all the accomplishments of your students, but then you also um, had some terrible backstories that um, were heartbreaking and difficult um, to uh, learn and be a part of. And you know, let's face it, kids can be difficult, you know? Um, kids can be challenging. We would be lying to you to say that you're gonna go into a classroom and every day that kids are gonna learn, come out of there and you're gonna be like, oh, I love my kids and they're always so well behaved and everything is wonderful. There were days in my first year of teaching, I drove home crying because there were some very challenging students. Um, but you learn how to manage that. And the administrative side of things, like I had a difficult time making that jump because I felt like, oh, I'm not gonna see every day that learning that's happening and taking place. But your ability to affect more students because you're now in charge of, I mean, at the school I was principal at, I had 3,600 students. So the decisions that I made, influence that many more you know students than the 30 that I had in front of me so administration isn't for everybody but it is absolutely an option that um, a lot of students don't realize uh, you know could come when they are considering a teaching career I just wanted to add to you because I know that many of you are not aware of this if you're considering being a program director for a mm. preschool part of a school district an administrative credential is required as well mm. to same mm -hmm. path mm -hmm. And you can often do that credential within a master's program. The other thing to mention that's a big difference that people don't know is some people are interested in teaching at the community college or the, or the uh, CSU or, you know, at the higher ed level. Um, believe it or not, you don't have to have a credential to teach at a community college. At a community college, what is expected is a master's degree in the subject area. So in order to teach math at Cerritos College, you have to have a master's at math. Some have a doctorate in math. In order to teach history, you have to have that master's in history um, so uh, a lot of k-12 teachers will get a master's but they'll do it in curriculum or administration but you can't teach at the community college level without that higher um, education degree in the subject that you will be teaching so, um, in regards to what you just mentioned about going on to teach at the CSU or community college level um, just because you have the schooling in that field doesn't make you a good teacher so that was actually what brought me here today is to learn more about what you can offer the people who have that pathway but want to be really stellar teachers mm -hmm. that's an excellent question <laughs> i know some cal states do have some certificate programs for mm -hmm. community college which can help you um, work on your theory a little bit more the art mm -hmm. And that's not to say that once you get the advanced degree, you come and teach and there's no other um, professional development. All of the faculty um, are focused on teaching and there is a Center for Teaching Excellence here on campus. There are a required number of hours that you do for professional development um, every year. Um, I know in teacher track, even for professional development, we have faculty that we work with all the time on, um, on looking at <coughs> teaching and examining teaching. We call them faculty inquiry groups. So internally, there are those um, type of things to help assist you with that. What I and I think which is the more difficult part of teaching that that art of teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Ob observing, you know, I think is so powerful. So then you can kind of pick up the strategies that they're using. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this is from this is actually an evidence evidence based practice. Um, and then also you can reflect on. Um, how could that have been handled differently or did they catch that you know um that student that maybe wasn't understanding or that student that wanted to share that sort of thing but observing as much as you can um is really 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 powerful and i'm sure they have wonderful um resources to you know professors in the field that um you know could could be a resource for you and then even you know at whatever level you would like but just that just can't in my you know professional opinion i think the observation piece is is just extremely powerful and and nicely complements your your study 
I wanted to add too, we do have a program here at Cerritos College, it's called the TAP program. And once you have your master's degree, you can apply for this TAP program and pick up an area that you're interested in and come to class with the professor every day, mm -hmm. see what goes into planning. We kind of fill out your comfort zone, so if you want to teach a few lessons or help with the grading, it's a program that you could do um, for two semesters. And it's fabulous, it's also great because it can go on your resume mm -hmm. and count towards to having some experience in the college classroom because it's very difficult to get a college job without have been in the college classroom. So it's another great thing that I suggest. Thank you. Good questions. So we are getting close to, I mean, we're, we're basically, we'll conclude the event. Is there anybody that wants to ask just one last question that you really want to ask? If not, we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Um, so I know you guys are creating the program between um, child development and um, teacher track. So I'm really interested in child development. Um, I know, I know. Um, I was actually talking to Professor Ola, and she said she knows you. <laughs> and, um, she said my friend will be there tomorrow. <laughs> and um, I talked to her yesterday, and I was just really interested in um, transitional kindergarten and regular kindergarten. And I was just wondering, like, how do you know if you want to do that? Well, um, can you repeat the question or something? Yes, you want to re repeat it a little bit or the ending part? Um, basically, I'm just I'm just wondering like um, how she knew she wanted to teach. Uh, um, well, your child's about learning teacher, but how she knew she was interested in the young children. So it sounds like you asked a little bit about transitional kindergarten yeah, too. I, I kind of learned in kindergarten. So if you're thinking about transitional kindergarten, child development probably would be the right choice for you because 24 units of child development is now required if you want to teach um, TK. I'm going to be honest, if that would have been around back in my day, that's probably the choice that um, I would pursue. There's going to be some new legislation too coming forward with TK. and. Um, Quality is so important, so somebody like you with a passion for young children, I just would highly recommend it, really highly recommend it. And TK teachers are credentialed. Um, they have a multiple subject credential, but they have that added requirement mm -hmm. of the child development units. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know what TK is, in California, the birth date, the cutoff was different than like the rest of the <coughs> country, excuse me. So. They move the birth date and there's like a three month period where if students are born between September and December, they do an additional year of kinder. Right, so you would have a major in child development and then a multiple subject teaching credential, or you might be a liberal studies major and make sure that you're picking up those 24 units and then getting your multiple subject credential. I have to tell you this though, even though a multiple subject credential focuses on K-6, that is still where I learned my art of teaching and helped me become a really fantastic preschool teacher. So whatever you're learning in that credential program really helps you with all ages. Adults too, because I found out, I've taught preschool to college, but it's really the same. It truly is. <laughs> your approach is the same. So, you know, leading with your heart and that's, that's yes. what counts, it really does. Great, so, oh, go ahead. Um, I it. also heard that there's going to be a change in how the specialty classes are going to be held, but in the fall there are going to be two nine-week se sessions of classes, like creativity will be one nine-week, and then math and science will be another nine weeks, and then in the spring you'll offer two different ones, something like that. Um, can you just speak a little bit more on the methodology? I can. This is more of a child development specific um, question. So for your child development permit, you can have a specialization. So you could be infant, toddler, special education or curriculum. And the curriculum classes are the classes that you're talking about. So next fall, you're going to have an opportunity to um, meet the specialization because the specialization is having six units. So in the fall, you could do music and movement and uh, creativity. And so you have the six units done and meet the requirements for your permit. In the <coughs> spring, it will be math and science, which is the class I teach, and that's actually going to be a 50-50 hybrid course, so mm -hmm. half online and uh, half in class. And then the second part of the semester would be the language arts. You don't have to do like both in the fall or both in the spring. You could pick any of those two of the four classes. 
Do you do long division there? I'm <laughs> I, I have never heard anyone say, and I love long division. I, I think that was the only thing I was really good at in that. <laughs> After that, not so much. <laughs> All right, great. Well, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, if, if you want to stick around and maybe ask a question or two individually, would you all be open to stay in oh, yeah, 10, 15 absolutely. minutes? Okay, great. So uh, thank you all for coming. I just want to uh, r remind you all that we may have another event in the future. So we'll email you if we do. Um, I'm planning on... Do we have our contact? Yes. Thank yeah, you. we have all your contact information. So the next one, I mentioned it in the Google form when you signed up. We're thinking about doing something about... Uh, professional networking and setting up a professional network online like a LinkedIn type of thing so you'll get more info about that but thank you for joining us if we could just have one last round of applause for our panelists thank you.